Let me say good morning to all of you today. Amen. We greet you in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. For there is no other name like the name of Jesus. Amen. So we thank God today that he has blessed us to gather today for worship yet one more time. If you're glad to be in the house, give him some praise. Amen. We bless him. We uplift him. We magnify the name of the Lord because the Lord did not have to allow us to be here, but because of his grace and his mercy we are gathered in this sacred space today both in person and virtually so we welcome our virtual audience here on today as well our call to worship this morning comes from psalms 112 which begins by saying praise the lord amen praise the lord hallelujah to the lord blessed is the man who fears the lord who delights greatly in his commandments. Amen. So we bless him. We cry hallelujah to him. We bless him because God blessed us with his commandments. Amen. He helps us to guide our steps. Amen. He helps us to uh, direct our paths. Anybody glad for God's commandments, God's word, God's righteousness that helps us to stay in step and in line. So blessed is the man who fears God and orders his life according to God's word. Come on and join me in a word of prayer here on this blessed Lord's day. God, again we say praise your name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God, we thank you for allowing us to gather today to worship your name. Uh, we cordially invite the presence of your Holy Spirit to not only be in this place today, but to saturate this place today. Uh, touch our hearts, those of us who have gathered in person and those who have gathered virtually. God, we know you're the same God and you're everywhere all the time at the same time. So while we're in this space and they're in their space, you can still collectively bless both spaces. So God, we pray that here on the day that you would just be pleased with our worship. And God, we need to hear from you during the hour of worship. We need you, God. Uh, we don't acknowledge how much we need you, but we need you. Without you, we couldn't even breathe. Without you... We wouldn't be able to do anything. But we are wholly dependent on you. So God, we ask that you would just be with us in this time of worship again, that we may experience your presence, experience your power, experience you in such a way that when we leave from this worship experience, we'll be able to say, surely it was good to have been in the presence of an all-loving God. So right now, free us of anything that would hinder us from worshiping you. Free us from anything that will hinder us from hearing from you. Because God, we want you to hear from us. But most importantly, Lord, we want to hear from you. Thank you for what you're doing in the life of our congregation. We think what you're doing in the life of our members. We pray we will continue to help us to strive to be the church in the community for the hearts of the community. We love you because you're so good to us. We love you because you're so kind to us. We love you because you're so forgiving of us. We love you because you tolerate us. We love you because you first loved us. In Jesus' name, this day we pray and that all of God's children say amen, amen, and amen. If you're glad again to be here, give God some more praise on today. We lift up the wonderful name of the Lord, our Savior. Again, it's just good to be here uh, and worship with you on today. We are so grateful that God has allowed us to gather in this sacred space again, both in person and virtually. So we, uh, again, just glad to have all of you and see all of you with us here on today. Amen. 
Let me again say uh, thank you for all that you continue to do to help us to do what we do, amen, by way of your continued faithfulness uh, in the area of giving. Just thank you so very much. We, 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 gratefully, we gratefully appreciate you because you do what you do. Again, we're able to do um, what we do by way of ministering to our community uh, and, and, and being a service to our, our, our parishioners and just, just beyond. So thank you so very much um, because, again, you hear me say it's not the Sunday, but it is true, generous hearts changes hearts and that's what we're striving to do as we strive to be the church in the community for the hearts of the community i want to say congratulations we did it our hand sanitizer kleenex drive generated over 1,000 items amen let's give god some praise for that today amen amen so thank you to our virtual audience and to those who are here today Thank you so much for being so supportive, amen. We eclipsed over a thousand items, amen. Give God some more praise for that, amen. And I thank you for answering the call, amen. I told you we, we need to go above and beyond in doing that because the last time we uh, did the 1K drive, amen, we had more people in attendance, amen. COVID has kind of lessened that, amen, but I told you, I believed, I mean, you had your mask on, so I couldn't really see, but I just knew behind your mask, amen, you were determined that it, regardless of how, how many of us it was or what not, you were going to do your part to help us to reach our goal, and together we did it, amen, amen, and amen. Again, those items will be, will be divided uh, between Booker T. Washington Elementary School as well as Coventry Oaks Elementary School as we look to be a blessing uh, to them. Amen. Thank you so much for your support. Amen. Also keep in mind our 233 for P23. Amen. That is our special love offering. Amen. And celebration of our Savior and service to the Savior. 233 years. We're asking for each member for a special love offering of $233 between now and our second Sunday uh, uh, church anniversary celebration to go toward Project 2023. Uh, those are some campus enhancements that we're doing by way of adding parking, paving, and lighting uh, at our mission, well, paving at the mission house, parking here in our facilities, and lighting around the church. So again, thank you so very much. We presented that to you at our annual church and worship through planning session, and you guys graciously say, yes, let's go forward. So we're moving forward with doing that. We're getting uh, things already rolling. So again, thank you for your support, and again, um, again, we welcome you to be a blessing to us as we we strive to achieve 233 for P23 uh, as we continue to enhance our facilities uh, both at our mission house and here on our local, here at our church worship space as we continue to strive to do ministry uh, to our community. So again, keep 233 for P23 in your hearts and your minds uh, as we move forward uh, with, with those enhancement activities. Also, this is Black History Month. Amen. A time of celebrating. Yeah, give God some praise for Black History Month, a time of celebrating our history and our heritage of which it is rich. Amen. And so we celebrate God and what he's done with and through us as a people doing uh, as, 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 as a people of color. So we thank God for this month of February. It's Black History Month. February is also Heart Awareness Month. Amen. This is also Heart Awareness Month. I want to thank our health ministry. Amen. Let's give our health ministry a hand today. Amen. You know, one of our goals is to uh, the four parts of our mission to be a holy church, a hospitable church, a healthy church, and a helping church. And our health ministry is helping us to be a healthy church. Amen. And so today there's information there in the hallway uh, dealing with heart awareness. Amen. We want to have healthy hearts spiritually, but God also wants to have us to have healthy hearts uh, physically. Amen. Amen. And so again, uh, there's some information out there that will help you. And also they are providing Free blood pressure checks, amen. Free blood pressure checks after morning worship, in between morning worship and Sunday school. They'll be in the nursing station. Uh, and that's my room in the best of you to my left and your right. So again, uh, we got free blood pressure checks as well as information uh, there in the best of you uh, to bless you as part of our Heart Awareness Month. Amen, amen. If you love the Lord, say amen. And if you're glad the Lord loves you, say amen. Amen. Come on, let's continue to worship the Lord today here in spirit and in truth. God bless you.
down by down by gonna lay down my sword and shield Study.
Sounds like a few people know about The Rock this morning. Amen. We are grateful for Jesus, who is a rock in a weary land. Amen. Give God some praise for our choir today. Amen. For blessing us with songs as part of our history and our heritage that continues to minister to us even on today. God bless your choir. Awesome. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Uh, amen. Has he ever stepped in right on time for anybody here today? <laughs> I used to... I used to hear the senior saints talk about it. Amen. I used to see how happy they would get. Amen. But uh, been walking with them just a little while now. Amen. And I've, I've had some times. Amen. When if he hadn't have stepped in. <laughs> Amen. Uh, he's, an, he's an on time God. Amen. And I'm grateful that I don't have to shout off nobody else's testimony. I, I got my own now. <laughs> Amen. As to how good God is. Amen. It's so good to see all of you here on today. And there are several here today who's been out ill and everything. Just, just good to see everybody here in the house of the Lord. Let's give our visitors a hand today as well. There are other places where they could be. But we thank God that they chose to let the Lord lead them this way. Amen. Uh, we normally, during the month of February, pay homage to our history and heritage by uh, focusing on black history. And so this, this, this month is of 2023 is no different. Amen. Uh, so with... Uh, Black History Month in mind. I invite your attention to Isaiah chapter 58. Amen. Isaiah chapter 58. This was our Sunday school. Well, some of these verses was part of our Sunday school lesson uh, several weeks ago. Um, the Lord has directed my attention back to this text once again. It's kind of lengthy, but um, the context of it sets us up real good. Isaiah chapter 58. I'm going to read verses 1 through 9. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 58 <clears throat> verses 1 through 
verses 1 through 9. Our focus text for preaching would be verses 1 and 6. If you have it in your Bibles or your electronic device and you're ready to go, say amen. amen. <clears throat> Again, reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. <clears throat> Cry aloud. <clears throat> Excuse me. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. At least they act like they do. As a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching God. They say, why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? God's response, in fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make my voice heard on high. Make your voice heard on high. It is a fast that I have chosen. Is it a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh? Then your light will break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. Amen. Verse 1, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Verse 6, is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Used for a subject, pursuing God's will for a just society. Pursuing God's will for a just society. Our theme for the year is pursuing God's will for me in the 23. Isaiah 58 says then we ought to pursue God's will for a just society. Graduate of the Berea College of Kentucky, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, founded OSLO, the Association for the Study of African American Life in History. He founded OSLO in 1915. Dr. Carter G. Woodson, a.k.a. the father of black history, started OSLO as for the purpose of highlighting the significant impact that blacks had contributed to the development of the social, political, and economic structures of the United States of America and abroad. With the inception of Black History Week in 1926, 
which evolved into Black History Month in 1979, also continued Dr. Woodson's tradition by disseminating information about black life history and culture on a global scale. Each year, as part of the celebration of Black History Month, also sets a Black History Month theme. The Association for the Study of African American Life and History, amen, sets annually a Black History theme, a focus it wishes for those who celebrate Black History to focus on during the course of the month of February. The Black History Month theme for 2023 is Black Resistance. Amen. The 2023 theme this year is Black Resistance. Also invites us to celebrate the impact that Black Resistance has had on the shaping of America. You do realize that without the resistance of people of color throughout the timing of the inception of this country, this nation would not be the nation that it is today. Have I got a witness? Without the contributions of black resistance, amen, slavery would have robbed the people with the ability to dream of a life beyond a life of bondage. Without black resistance, slavery would have done in our culture. Without black resistance, even after slavery was ended, amen, Jim Crow, segregation, would have still uh, stamped out the hopes for a brighter tomorrow. We're here this morning because a few people of color dared to resist the winds of injustice. Have I got a witness? Asaw wants us to, to, to take a moment, amen, during this month of black history and celebrate the mere fact of what we have contributed and shaping what America is today. I cannot imagine, amen, where this nation would be or where we would be if it wasn't for black resistance. But Asaw says we don't want to just celebrate the past. But we want to reflect on why it's still needed in the present. If you and I still are honest, while America is better than what America has been, America still can be better. Have I got a witness? <laughs> yeah, so our saw says, uh, we don't want to just celebrate yesteryear's black resistance performance, but we want to engage in resistance even now because we want a better today, but we also want a better tomorrow. Thank God that things are better than what they were, but I also know that things can be better as long as there's still a Tyrese Nichols situation. There is still the need for black resistance. As long as, as long as some of the economic dynamics that keeps a people on the foot is still in play, I declare there is still the need for resistance. As long as there is homelessness in a country that throws away tons of food every year, there is still the need for resistance. So, so, so our Saul says, let's celebrate it but let's also get engaged in it. Our theme for the year is pursuing God's will for me in the 23. With that being said, I believe part of God's will for me in the 23 is that God uh, wills that I pursue, pursue his will for a just society. 
That's what we find here in Isaiah chapter number 58. We find God calling Isaiah into, into, in, into ministry or calling Isaiah to action rather, calling Isaiah to action to strive for the producing of a just society. And as long as there are still injustices running afoot, God calls on us to be part of resisting, amen, injustice and striving for a just society society. Brothers and my sisters, this morning as we look into our text in Isaiah chapter number 58, there are several things that comes apart, it becomes a part of pursuing God's will for a just society. Isaiah 58 verse number 1 says that if we're going to pursue God's will for a just society, we must lift up our voice. Amen. Look very carefully in, in verse number 1 of Isaiah chapter 58, God says to Isaiah, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. God says to us today, if we're going to pursue his will for a just society, we must lift up our voice. Amen. He tells Isaiah to lift up your voice. Amen. And might I suggest to you today after pursuing and looking at the verb tenses, amen, uh, of Isaiah 58 verse number one, lifting up your voice is not a choice, it's a command. Lifting up your voice is not a choice, it's a command. Here in the text, God does not allow for the prophet to sit idly by and not lift up his voice. Here in the text, amen, he says, he says, I want you to cry aloud. Don't hold back. Lift up your voice. And tell my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. The verb tenses, amen, of the cry aloud. The verb tense of the lift up. The verb tense of the tail in verse 1 is in the imperative tense. And the imperative tense is a tense of verb that says something is not a suggestion, it's not a recommendation, it's a divine commandment. God literally commands Isaiah to raise his voice. Brothers and my sisters, God does not allow for us to sit on the sidelines, amen, and if everything is good with you, you don't have the luxury of sitting by as long as something is not good for somebody else. One of the ways that you show God you appreciate things being good with you is that you speak out against things that are not good for somebody else. Isaiah was good. Cool, he was part of the elite. He was part of the religious establishment. But God would not allow Isaiah to sit comfortably in his position. While others in society were dealing with injustice. He says to Isaiah, cry aloud, I command you. Lift up your voice, I command you. Tell my people, I command you. Isaiah says to us, amen, lifting up our voice is not an option, it's not a choice, it's a command. Matter of fact, uh, the, way the, the way the text is kind of worded, amen, uh, it says, cry aloud, lift up like a trumpet, tell my people. But really and truly, uh, uh, the, 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 the cry aloud, uh, when the translators translated cry aloud, uh, the word, Hebrew word for cry aloud in the text really is just to call out or to call out to. What they did in the translation is that they picked up on the emphasis of uh, raise your voice and, 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 and added it to the cry out loud. Uh, it goes like this. It says, uh, really reads, uh, uh, call out to. And then cry out louder if they don't hear you. And keep on crying till they respond appropriately to you. Let me say one more time. The way it really acts in the text is, is call out to. 
Cry out louder if they don't hear you. And you keep on crying until they respond appropriately to you. For the word cry in the text literally means to call out to someone. And you call out to someone because you're calling for something. In the text, the word cry out means to call out to someone because you want a peaceful resolution to a situation. Uh, the, the call out here is, is you call out for a peaceful resolution to the situation, but if a peaceful solution is not reached, then you escalate the raising of the voice so that a peaceful solution can be granted. And if the one you're calling out to refuses to give you the right resolution, the text calls for you to engage in confrontation. Huh. Now, we don't like the word confrontation, but, we, but, but what I've come to discover is we really don't have an issue with confrontation. We just get confrontational over the wrong stuff. <laughs> if we spend more time confronting the stuff the Bible called us to confront and less time on the stuff we confront, I believe our churches and our communities would be in a whole lot better place. We don't have a problem confronting each other. I might as well preach some up here. We don't have a problem confronting each other when one of us get on each other's nerves. So the people, we, we, we really don't have a problem with confrontation. We just have issues because our confrontations are misguided. Literally in the text, God calls for the prophet to be confrontational. He tells the prophet, what I want you to do is, I want you to confront those who are the oppressors or confront those who are engaging in injustice. I'm calling on you to elevate your voice. Not only am I calling you to elevate your voice, I'm calling on you to escalate your voice. I'm calling you to escalate your voice, and I don't want you to escalate your voice. I want you to continue elevating and escalating your voice. I want you to continue to be a voice for the voiceless. God says to Isaiah, Isaiah, as my prophet, as my servant, I want you to lift up your voice and say something about what's going on. Because the idea is, is that if Isaiah don't say something, who's going to say something? Amen. If those who know right don't stand up for right, then who's going to stand up for the right? God calls for us to raise our voices. God calls for us to escalate the voice so change can take place. That's part of what we do as part of Bill. We raise our voice. Amen. The only reason you ever say that? I keep reminding us. The only reason, amen. We have the apartment complex that there was a vision to provide affordable housing. But then we rehab. The only reason we rehab because Bill raised their voice over a 10 year period to get the city of Lexington to set aside $2 million annually for affordable housing. Because of that, we were able to rehab an apartment complex, make it more energy efficient without turning the, 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 the cost of the rehab onto the cost of the pocketbook of the, of the resident. Amen. That's what God do, did because there was a group of people that dared to raise their voice. God says, I, I want you to engage in pursuing God's will for justice. One of the ways you do it, you raise your voice. The only way we raise our voice is that we raise our voice when we gather, amen, to call people accountable, to make change, amen. That's why we have the vision of 52-1. Amen. Amen. 
The vision of 52 1 says if we can gather for 52 weeks a year to worship God, we ought to be able to gather as a congregation at least one time of year to cry out for the justice of God. Let me say it one more time. If we can gather 52 Sundays out of the year to worship God, we ought at least be able to gather one time of year to lift up our voices for the justice of God. Because you cannot, in the text, as we're looking at, God says, you cannot worship me without seeking my justice. He says, if, 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 if you think that coming to a worship service, if you think fasting is what really gets it with me, no, that's not the religious practice I've chosen. The religious practice I've chosen is that you will break the bonds of wickedness. Worship with no breaking is a worship God does not hear. Let me say it one more time. It's in the text. Worship with no breaking is a worship that God doesn't hear. Because God says, I hear those, amen, who has a heart for making life better for others. Because after all, I'm the God that sets folks free. And if you're going to worship me, you're going you're gonna to worship me by doing the things I'm asking you to do. So one of the things God asks us to do is to pursue his will for justice. God says it's not a choice, it's a command. It's not a choice because, not only because it's a command, it's not a choice because of what God demands. Look at the rest of verse number one. He says, tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Interesting, the word transgression in the text means crime. Before it was ever used as a religious term, it was a legal term. God literally says, I want you to tell my people their crimes. God demands that crimes be exposed. But then he says, and tell the house of Jacob their sins. He said, not only do I demand that crimes be exposed, but I demand that trickery be revealed. It's interesting that God says, tell my people their transgressions. Then he says, in the house of Jacob, their sins. God had a question. So he he, he, he could have used Tell Israel their sins. But he said, tell the house of Jacob their sins. Uh, that spoke to me because God said the reason why, uh, yeah, we, we want to celebrate uh, uh, black resistance from yesteryear but be engaged in it today because there's something that's still in the nation's DNA. The word Jacob in the text, y'all Bible scholars know it, uh, that was his name before God changed his name to Israel. Jacob's name is Trickster. He got everything he got early on in life by tricking his way. And the reason why we still got to have a voice today is because there's trickery that's always been in this country's DNA. They've been tricking from the beginning and they're still tricking right now. And if don't nobody say something, they'll keep on in their trickery. And the reason why a lot of folk don't have what they have because there's still a whole lot of policies that's outlined in trickery. Some folk call it voter reform, I call it voter suppression. Trickery. <laughs> Y'all don't like me in this house today. Uh, 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 but, but, but God says, I demand it because I demand better for people. Lift up your voice. But he said, I want you to lift up your voice because I want the loosening of bonds. 
Wish I had time, amen. Verse number six, he says, lift up your voice because I want the loosening of bonds. Verse number six, he, he skipped from, uh, skip from verses two to five because that's where Israel and God dialogues. They said, God, we've been fasting, but you don't, you, you're not recognized. We've been trying to get closer to you, but you're not responding to our prayers. God said, because you're doing all the wrong stuff to get right with me. If you really want to... Uh, Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to keep it on the wraps. Amen. Uh, he, he, he's really telling religious folk that's in power or religious folk that support folk in power. If you really want to get right with me, don't just come to the house of worship. Take it to the place where you're making the rules. If you really want to get right with me, this is the practice verse 6 that I have chosen I have not chosen for you to stop eating I have chosen for you to stop preventing other folk from eating I haven't chosen for you to go without I have chosen for you to stop creating means where people keep going without I am not calling for you to be more uh, religious I'm calling for you to be more righteous. Uh, what I'm calling for is for you to loose the bonds. Uh, the word, he's, he's doing that. He says, why? Because I'm trying to create a great nation. The Lord says, I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm talking to Israel because I'm trying to create a great nation. That's the reason why when a certain presidential candidate, gay man that became a president, had as, a, as his theme, make America great again, that was one of the greatest theological errors that could ever have been spoken by a guy and supported by somebody that's religious, because you can't make a nation great again if it ain't never been great. It's done some great things. But according to the Bible, it ain't great. There has been some great achievements, but according to the text, it ain't great. It has some great folks in it, but according to the text, it ain't great. Because a great nation is a nation, amen, that strives to create opportunities for everybody. I told you I wish I had time. He said, loose, the word loose in the text, let me go and get real quick. The word loose in the text literally means to open wide. It means to open wide. It means to open up the gap. It means to dig a breach. It means to open up that which was once restricted. God has said in the text, I got too many folks standing restricting some things. So I got opportunities that's being limited based upon your skin color. I got opportunities that's limited based upon what side of the street you you live on. I got opportunities restricted based upon what, 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 what neighborhood you live in. I, I, there, there are restrictions based upon who your family is. There's restrictions. And a great nation doesn't look to restrict. A great nation looks to open up opportunities. He says in the text, open. Why? <laughs> Have I got a witness? Uh, uh, that's the reason why we got to keep on, keep on, keep it on because, amen, it used to be more restricted than what it is right now. But some of us have made some good money. Some of us have had some good jobs. And the only way you got what you got is that somebody opened up some stuff for you. And if he opened it up for you, he looks to use you to open it up for somebody else. Open wide, he said. What, what do you want to open? Open the bonds. Of wickedness the bonds of wickedness tells us right here God says I want you to create opportunities for everybody and I don't want you to restrict the mobility of anybody for the word bonds in the text in the Hebrew is fetters you know what fetters are fetters are uh, the chains that they put on the ankles of criminals that limits their mobility it keeps them only able to make short steps. It doesn't let them make amazing strides, but it keeps them in a tight space. Not only that, but it keeps them from running. <laughs> and, and, 
and, and God says to Israel, ah, what you're doing is you are restricting the mobility of folk. You're treating them like prisoners instead of like people. Uh, you, 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 you are, you are, I, I'm calling on you to be a great nation. And a great nation opens opportunities for everybody. A great nation doesn't restrict the mobility of anybody. Because a great nation gets rid of what he calls bonds of wickedness. Wickedness in the text uh, is that which uh, uh, is, is, is wicked because it's a violation and it vexes. Anything you do to violate me and my personhood, God calls it a wickedness. Every, every, everything you do that prevents, amen, my mobility, God calls it a wickedness. As long as there is the engagement of restricting mobility and access to opportunity, amen, you have room to become greater than what you are. Have I got a witness? He said, I'm trying to create a great nation. But I'm also trying to create a leaping nation. I'm trying to create a nation of leapers. What do you mean, Reverend? He says, because not only don't want you to loose the bonds of wickedness, but I also want you to undo the heavy burdens. The word undo literally means to become undone. Uh, it means, it means, it means, it means to, to, to literally, it means uh, to come apart. It's the idea of getting rid of anything, amen, that causes me to jump in terror. Literally, the word undo points to that which causes somebody to jump, 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 jump because of terror. He says anything that's causing somebody to jump in terror is something that must be gotten rid of. If it's preventing you, amen, from driving at night, being scared of being pulled over, something needs to be gotten rid of. If it causes you to be afraid when you see somebody in uniform, something has to be gotten rid of. Because God said, I'm trying to prove relationships between the have, the have nots, between law enforcement and community. I'm trying to make a nation great. I'm trying to heal everybody. But if it's going to get healed, there's got to be some things that's got to be undone. Then he says, uh, uh, get rid of anything that causes you to jump in terror or, or get rid of anything that causes you not to jump higher. That's the word heavy burdens in the text. Heavy burdens in the text means yoke of burdens. And you cannot jump high if you got yokes of burdens on your back. If you got burdens on your back, you cannot jump. You cannot leap to higher heights. And I don't know about you, but I believe God wants all of God's children to be able to leap to higher heights. I believe God wants everybody to have an opportunity to, to achieve upward mobility. I believe God wants everybody to have the opportunity to be able, uh, yeah, to have the pursuit of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Anybody got a witness? Have I got a witness in this day? Anybody in here that believe that God wants everybody to have the ability to be somebody. God in the text says, what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to create a great nation. I'm trying to create a great nation uh, because I'm not the God of oppression. I'm not the God that wants to keep people weighed down. I'm not the God that wants to keep people bowed under the pressures of society. I'm the God that specializes in deliverance. As a matter of fact, when I introduce myself to you, Israel, I introduce you as to a God uh, that delivers people out of bondage uh, and is there anybody in here today that know that God still is in the bondage breaking business he's still trying to break yokes God literally in the text was trying to make a nation great again or great rather not again trying to make a nation great he was trying to make a nation great he was trying to make a nation great and look at what he said I'm trying to do this, and what I want you to do is to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. Every yoke. Every yoke. Everything that prevents opportunity 
get rid of it. Everything that prevents mobility, get rid of it. What runs a nation? Institutional policies. Whether economic, judicial, political policies. What is God pointing to in the text? Institutional reforms. He said, I want to reform the things that prevents mobility. My brothers and my sister, God has given us a, div a divine command to lift up our voice and not only sing, but to lift up our voice to call for justice. Is there anybody in here today who's ready to lift up your voice? If so, give God some praise. The invitation on Christian discipleship is being extended today. If you have not accepted Christ as your Lord, I invite you to come. Christ himself was a resistor of injustice. As a matter of fact, when he healed that man with the withered hand on the Sabbath day, he was fighting against injustice. He was letting the religious elite know that the stuff you are doing to keep people down just to keep your position ain't right. So to show that people can have a freer life without you, it's easier for me to say thy sins be forgiven or simply to heal the man. And he healed the man's hand. And they wonder in themselves, what's going on? This man, Jesus, has just subverted the system. They're supposed to come to us to get forgiveness. Jesus says, no, they don't have to come to you. They don't have to come to a system that's keeping them oppressed. They can come to a God that wills that they be free. Jesus wants us to follow him as his disciples and help bring freedom to the lives of others. So we introduce you to that Jesus who wants you to be free, whether virtually or in person, free from your sins, free from life choices that causes you to be bowed down, troubled. Give your life to Christ and give him a chance and watch what he, what he does with you, but also what he'll do through you. He can use you to make a difference in the life of others. The invitation is being extended. We invite you to come accept Christ as your Savior. You may come. You may reach us out via our Facebook page or on our website. You may call 859-252-7191. Or maybe you have a church. Maybe you come to Christ and you're looking for a church home. We welcome you to come. Unite with us as we strive, as we strive to be the church in the community for the hearts of the community. Come join us as we pursue God's will for, for us in the 23, as we pursue God's will for a just society, as we pursue God's will. We welcome you. Is there, is there one? Is there one? Is there one?
candidate for baptism may come by letter of Christian experience. Jesus is calling. Is there one to answer the call today? Can't let the church say amen. Let us remind you again that our health ministry is in the, in the rear. Amen. You have information for Heart Awareness Month. Uh, they're there. Also, we're taking blood pressure checks. They are there. Amen. And again, God bless you. We pray you've been blessed with today's worship experience as we pursue God's will for a just society. Amen. God says, if it's good with you, good. But make sure you make it good for somebody else too. Amen and amen to God be good. Let's give God some more praise today as we prepare to include our worship service. As we transition from the worship of the word to the study of the word with our study school hour. Again, so good to see all of you here on today. To God be the glory. Again, grateful to our hospitality ministry, deacons ministry, our audio video ministry. Thank all of you, amen, for all that you do week after week to help us to do what we do. Amen. As we strive to be the church in the community for the hearts of the community. Come on and receive our benediction for the day. God, how we thank you for being the God of deliverance the God who desires a just society. So much so you're the God that's building a kingdom, a kingdom wherein there is no injustice. So we pray God that you allow us as kingdom builders to strive all that we can to do to make a society reflect what you would have it to look like. Open opportunities for everyone non-restricted mobility to reach higher heights and depths thank you for how you've blessed us we pray you will continue to keep on blessing but more importantly God keep on using us to make life better for someone else now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest rule and abide with all of us henceforth now and forever 
And let all of God's children say amen, 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 and amen. God bless you. Amen. We love you. We love you. And God loves you too. Have a blessed week.